Researchers are getting closer to a coronavirus vaccine. This effort is global and is taking some time, but we want to take this moment to talk about how close we are to a vaccine and, and what it will take to get it to you. Joining us now is Dr. Bob Lahida. He's a professor of medicine at New York Medical College and the chairman of medicine at St. Joseph University Hospital. Dr. Lahida, thank you for speaking with us today. You know, dozens of potential vaccines are being developed around the world right now. Yes. What is the process researchers are using and which one do you think is most promising? Well, let me go through the phases. I, I put my glasses on here to go through the phases of how a vaccine is developed. First of all, we have phase one, which you've all heard about, and that basically is a safety trial. Then phase two is an enlargement of the trial given to a few hundred people, and uh, it's an expanded trial. And then phase three is an efficacy trial to see if it works on thousands of people. And then we have something called warp speed, which is taking the vaccine and pushing it so that we have data. Now, today, well, let me go through the different kinds of vaccines for your viewers. We have a biologically protein-based vaccine, which is actually where proteins from the coronavirus are injected in to the patient to provide an immune response. And hopefully that response will be both antibody and cellular. The cells in our bodies, T cells and B cells, but T cells will respond to the protein. Then we have what's called the genetic vaccines where the, uh, uh, an RNA from the, vac the virus itself, the coronavirus, is injected. Uh, messenger RNA, which is made from the RNA of the virus, is injected, and you make a biological response to that. The immune system is fooled into thinking that it has coronavirus in your blood. And then there's also the whole virus vaccine. The whole virus vaccine is what we're pretty much accustomed to with the influenza vaccine and vaccines against other things like uh, whooping cough and measles, et cetera. The viral vector vaccines are the latest and the ones that are really very, very exciting. And that uses a benign virus to carry a, a protein from the coronavirus into the body and infects the cells, as, and the body thinks that it's being infected with COVID-19 when, in fact, it is not. So this is what is very, very close, and that's from the Oxford University trials. The Oxford University mm -hmm. trials today have shown that this virus is very efficacious in phase three, the end of phase three, and going into what we call warp speed. And this means that the vaccine could be available uh, October, November, and maybe totally by December, everyone will have a vaccine available to be immunized. Uh, it's extremely exciting. So I just want to underscore that. You're saying best case scenario of the most optimistic um, vaccine trials that you're seeing could potentially be something available in the last few months of this year. Yes, I'm saying that because the Oxford University trials which is a viral vector vaccine. And that means using a benign virus to carry uh, fragments of COVID into your body. Um, that vaccine has shown great promise, according to a paper in Lancet, in over a thousand people. It's shown promise insofar as neutralizing antibody is being made. That means antibody that sticks to the COVID-19 spikes, which have been introduced into your body without COVID-19, and then it generates a T-cell response as well, a thymus-derived lymphocyte, which is a cell in the body that's very important to your immune system to protect you from the overall infection by COVID-19. It's extremely exciting and very promising. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to be able to talk to you about that very point because we are still learning new information about this virus itself. There are reports that it is mutating around the world. Some people who have been cured um, after having coronavirus still speak about having a, a distinct lack of taste and smell. I'm wondering the, the trials and, and what, what they are trying to establish, are you seeing any side effects? Or I guess what I'm trying to get to is what type of side effects are indicative of some of these vaccines? 
Well, the side effects that are present in most vaccines include soreness at the site of injection, muscle aches, which we call in medicine myalgias, um, a low-grade fever, perhaps. But the fact that there are mutants, and you mentioned these mutants of the coronavirus, we are not concerned about that because these mutants have not been shown to be more infective than the original coronavirus 19 or, or SARS-2. Um, it just simply means that the viral load may be different and that it will not necessarily inf uh, affect the immune response that we all produce against COVID-19. So I'm not concerned. What I am a little bit concerned about is the coronavirus is related to the common cold, and uh, we either have developed a vaccine against the common cold going forward, or that the immunity will not last beyond, say, two or three months, and then one will have to have a booster shot. Now, that's not such a big deal because we do that with a lot of vaccines. For example, hepatitis A or hepatitis B, we give booster shots uh, after a certain period of time to ensure that your immune system has responded appropriately. And we want everybody to respond appropriately. My real concern are people who don't want to get the vaccine whatsoever because they're afraid. And that's not a realistic uh, belief. And look, fear is something we're watching as far as people not wanting to put on a mask. Uh, you know, as people face challenges and delays with getting a test and then delays in getting results from a test. As we look forward to influenza season, plenty of people will have colds. What is your advice to people in how to proceed the next few months as far as protecting well, themselves and being mindful when they hear news about potential vaccines? Well, never drop your guard. Everybody should be wearing a mask and keeping safe distancing. That's imperative until we have a vaccine that is available to everyone, particularly healthcare workers, school teachers, bus drivers, subway conductors, etc. Keep on your guard and don't let it down saying, well, you know, the virus is going away and I'll just wait for the vaccine to come. That's not going to happen right away. And we're seeing spikes of infection because people aren't heeding our suggestion that we should all wear masks. I'm not wearing a mask because I'm by myself here in my library. But as soon as I leave my library, I put the mask on because I'm worried about my passing the virus on to someone else and someone else should be worried about passing the virus on to me. So number one, take it realistically. This is not a hoax. I've heard from people saying to me, this has got to be a hoax. How could it be really that infective? Well, it is that infective and it's that dangerous because we don't know who is susceptible, who will succumb to this virus if they're unprotected. If you wash your hands and you wear the mask and you keep your distance, you should be okay. So much good information there from the doctor, Dr. Bob Lahida there telling us there is reason for optimism, but do not let your guard down. Really appreciate your time today. Thanks a lot, Dr. Lahida. Thank you.